Hey everybody, it's your old friend Kenny from Laughing Dog Graphics here in Minear, Illinois. Uh, wanted to show you something that's kind of unique, a job that we're working on right now. Uh, a lot of people think the only thing that we print in here is t-shirts and sweatshirts and wearables and things like that, but uh, a couple months ago I was approached by a guy named John Rettmeyer who asked me to recreate some vintage seed bags. Um, if you're from central Illinois or, or the central part of the country probably, for that matter, you've probably heard of Funk's Brothers Seeds. So John brought me in a couple of very old seed bags. Uh, one of them had a logo on it that I believe was from 1901 and the other had a logo on it that was from 1930 something so challenge number one was rebuilding the logos to the original specifications from bags that were you know decades old that were all stretched out of shape and things like that so uh, it's kind of tough when you get somebody that brings you something and, and you know that was the best they had for artwork so it, it, it took a long long time to get that artwork recreated now uh, one design is four colors and that's the one that I've got set up here today the other design is three colors, and luckily the last design is only one color. But uh, the first thing that we noticed is these bags are approximately 14 by, oh heck, I don't know, eight. And they won't fit on a regular platen, which is are these arms here, that you would print a t-shirt on. So luckily I have a, my youngest brother is a custom cabinet maker and I went to him and I said, hey, I need you to make some arms for my press. And we took one of the bags and we measured it and we got everything out and we put them together. I took some brackets off of some old t-shirt platens and we thought we had it licked. Well, I brought it down, set everything up, got the artwork lined up. And the first thing we discovered is uh, we didn't make uh, enough room on the bottom for the bags to slide over. There's an arm under here that this whole thing connects to, and then the bag wouldn't slide on far enough. So everything come, comes back off, took them back down to Keith's shop. Uh, he put a, a half, in, half inch spacer in here, and now that allows, and you probably can't see it, but that allows the bag to slide over the arm and we can get it on there far enough for the design to fall in the right place. Um, then the next thing that I discovered was the width of the bags is very inconsistent and I've got one of the bags here that hasn't gone on the press yet um, but there are seams, hems, strings, everything on these things and it doesn't seem like there's any consistency or any two of them that seem to be alike so threading them onto this arm to even get started printing them was a challenge so once again I took everything down took them down to key shop and I said hey we need to narrow these things up a little bit so we took off another <laughs> and when I say we I mean Keith uh, took off another eighth inch off each side and then put a round corner on everything with a router so that hopefully these things would slide on a little easier. And then found out that uh, these things are extremely rough and after you handle them for a while and slide them on and off the press the first thing you'll discover is you no longer have any hide left on the end of your fingers. So I went out and found some of these old school, I don't even know what they call them, I call them finger thingies, 
uh, to protect the ends of my index fingers from sliding them on and sliding them off because I was just tearing my hands up like crazy and I always thought my hands were you know fairly gnarled up anyway so then we have to spray each one of these arms with a little bit of spray adhesive to hold the bag in place so that it won't slide around when we're printing it. And you can also see here that there's a little bit of the design that is already on the arm and that's because these darn things are also porous. And that means that ink that is being printed on top of them is going through and going onto the arm a little bit. So I'm going to show you right here how we have to thread these things on here. And we pull them all the way to the end so that the artwork's going to hit in the right place. And now I'm going to smooth that out. So because these bags are porous, I needed to make sure that I used a screen mesh that was fine enough that it would let through enough ink to put down the image that I wanted, but not so much that it was just soaking the bag or that it was uh, you know, able to smear it around. So I'm gonna reach over here, I'm going to uh, turn my flash dryer around. If you've seen any of the videos before, sometimes with a multicolor job, uh, we'll, we'll flash and it's basically means put a little bit of heat over the top of the color that's just been printed to dry it to the touch although it's not cured all the way through. So I'm going to reach over here and I'm going to get my, dry, uh, my flash dryer in place for the next color. Uh, the very first color that we're putting down here is a yellow gold and it is going to represent the kernels of on a uh, on an ear of corn. So I'm putting that down, and then we're gonna it runs over, rotates over underneath this flash dryer, and I like to have it under there for just you know three or four seconds, just enough to firm up that gold ink, and that will allow us to move on to the next color which is going to be red and not have things smear around so much. Uh, you'll also notice is that, that this press has six arms on it so um, I had Keith make six of these so that a job that is very labor intensive and very time consuming uh, we could actually be doing six of them at a time rather than one of them at a time so, okay, there's the last one that gets yellow. Now, the next color is this red, and this is the, seems to be the one color in this logo that everything else, no pun intended, revolves around. There's a lot of red on there, and the red ink is uh, kind of sticky, and when I discovered, when I was printing uh, the samples to get everything lined up the red ink was sticking to the black screen which is the next color so I'm leaving it underneath that flash there for probably about four or five seconds just enough to kind of dry that red ink up a little bit so the next screen won't stick to it okay so the red one here is the most important. And if you also notice, if you can see inside these screens, because this design is kind of small and uh, you know longer than it is wide, I've actually got uh, this design set up on one side and this design set up over here, and I might have to move everything around for the logo from 1901 that I'll be doing next. Now. When I first uh, got everything set up and I was keeping John in the loop, um, I told him that I thought we would probably be able to do uh, one of these designs in a day, 
and I found out very rapidly that this thing doesn't go nearly as quickly as I had hoped. And, uh, you know, it's just a challenge. You know, sometimes you get stuff, not everything's easy. And luckily, John is a very understanding guy and he wants it right. He doesn't want to hurry things. So he allows me to do my thing and we get along great. So here you see the black is coming down and it is the outline of the Funks hybrid. And it's also uh, outlining the, the G that's in the middle of the ear of corn. So now you can kind of start th seeing things come together. We'll go ahead and finish up here. I got a couple more that need to get black on them. Um, as I had said before, I'm using a very fine mesh. Um, and you probably can't see it, but on the end of this screen here, it says 300. Supposedly, that means there are 300 strands of fabric in the inch. I didn't take time to count them. I'm just going to take their word for it. But the higher that number is, the finer the mesh. So if you had a screen, say, that was a 110, it would let through a lot more ink than one that's a 300 or a 305 or a 330, something that's way finer. So, like I said before, what I'm trying to do is put down just enough ink to finish a job and give us the image that we want, but I don't want it so thick that it smears or is going to give us problems when it comes to curing. Because when these are done, they have to run, run through uh, Big Bertha here behind me. Is, that's our name for our dryer. And that's what cures the ink and makes it dry and, and uh, hold up a lot better. So, and to be real honest, I had no clue that there was even a market for uh, replica seed bags or anything like that. But you know what? I collect... Uh, rock and roll stuff and sports memorabilia and things like that so it just makes sense that there would be a market for vintage farming equipment and corn bags and stuff like this so i believe john said they actually have a museum over there near funks grove and they're going to be selling these things i you know what i don't know what he's going to do with them but all i know is when he gets them, he's going to be thrilled. Okay, there's the last one. I'll stand back here a little bit and see. This is a four-color design. Gold, red, black, Kelly green. And now you got the chore of getting this thing unstuck and trying to get it off of here because that spray adhesive that I put on earlier. You can also see these things are poor, so you got a little image coming up on there. But this is what the finished product looks like, kids. So we will uh, hopefully catch you on down the road. I'm going to run these things through the dryer and maybe grab me a nice icy Coca-Cola here in a minute, take a break. But thank you very much, and I hope to run into you down the road. Take care, guys.